Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are going to be talking about the cell cycle. So the cell cycle is just that. It is a cycle involving cells. So a cycle is something that repeats, which we'll talk about. And the cell cycle specifically is how we make more cells. So our bodies need to grow and to repair and we need more cells in order to do that. So the cell cycle is the way that we produce more cells. And there are two words there, cell cycle and two main phases. They're called interphase and mitosis. And we're going to dive a little bit deeper into those two phases throughout this lecture. So what is a cycle? So a cycle is something that is continuous. It's a circle. It's a loop. It never ends. Um, so this is really important for the cell cycle because sometimes it's hard to remember when you're going through all of the different steps that once you reach the end, you're not finished. You have to start over again. So the cells that are created at the end of the cycle then go through the cycle themselves. And that is a cycle. It's continuous. It never ends. So the cell cycle is how we make more cells. That's what we just said. So this is a never ending cycle. It is a never ending process that continues and continues and continues until we're no longer alive because we don't need to, more cells to grow and to repair when we're not around anymore. So this is a picture of our cell cycle here. It's gonna start in G1. That's the first step of interphase here. Okay, so we're gonna go G1, S, G2, and then the M phase, which is mitosis. So we'll get a little further into that as we go. So why do cells have to divide? If we are dividing them to make more cells, like why do those cells have to divide? When do we know that a cell has to divide? So cells are always growing. Think about them growing larger, right? Larger cells have a really hard time moving nutrients and waste products in and out of the cells that we just learned about in cellular transport. So the larger they are, the more cytoplasm, the bigger space, right? And they're just becoming unhealthy. So we need small cells where nutrient transport is very easy because they have so much less volume. So if we take a big cell and we divide it into two through the process of the cell cycle, then we're reducing that huge size into half that size. So now it's a lot healthier because you can move things in and out of the cell faster. So in the example here at the bottom, so um, if materials in the nucleus need to get out of the cell, uh, which cell would they escape from the quickest? So if the little purple dots are the nucleus in each one of these situations and the blue is kind of like the cytoplasm along with all the other organelles, obviously if you're traveling from the nucleus to the outside of the cell, the smallest one is going to be the one that is the quickest travel. So why do we need more cells and why do we need the cell cycle to help make more cells for us? That's to grow and to repair. I touched on this just a minute ago. So cell cycle creates more cells. We need more cells because we're growing and we're repairing our bodies. Okay, you are not the same size today as when you were born. You have grown. You have a lot more cells now than you did back then. And we need to repair our bodies. When you get a paper cut or you fall down your skin, your knee, it's not just like damaged forever. You can repair that by creating more cells through the cell cycle. So it's a nasty picture of a scab forming there or coming off there um, that you grow new skin underneath. So that is how your body repairs itself with the cell cycle because it's making more healthy cells for us. So what are the stages? We said cell cycle, two words and two phases interphase and the M phase, also called mitosis. So an interphase, that's where the cell is going to spend around 90% of its life, a very long time. Okay. And then in um, mitosis, it's a very quick little 10% of the cell's life. If you look at the picture, you can see that G1 in interphase, that big blue section, right? G1 is actually the longest phase of the whole cell cycle, right? But G1, S, and G2 make up interphase, which is the first main stage of the cell cycle. And then the second part is actual division, right? And division is just mitosis. And that's a very quick, those little yellow sections there. Very, very quick. So why do you think that the cell only spends 10% of its life in mitosis? Well, it's because in interphase, the cell is growing and doing its daily functions. And that's really important that it's doing that most of the time. So we're going to look at that in just a second. Again, overall cell cycle, this is what's happening in these different stages here. So remember, it's a cycle, it's repeating, and we have interphase, that purple section, as our main step, 90% of the cell's life. And then mitosis, it's got all these little subdivisions, but that is 10% of the cell's life. It's a very, very quick process. So phases of interphase. We have G1, which is called gap 1, S, which is called synthesis, and G2, which is called gap 2. They go in that order, that is interphase. Okay, so in G1, we have growth. That is the longest stage of the cell cycle. Um, <clears throat> that's where the cell is growing. 
it's where the cell is doing its normal functions, right? If it's blood cells, it's transporting oxygen and carbon dioxide and things like that around your cells or around your body. If it's a muscle cell, it's contracting, right? It's doing its daily function, whatever that may be based on the different types of cells. In synthesis, synthesis means to make. So we're making something here. If it's called the synthesis phase, we're making a copy of DNA. DNA is replicated or we have a copy. So at the end of the S phase, we have two complete sets of DNA, two complete sets of DNA at the end of the S phase. Then the G2 phase is for um, its preparation. This cell is about to go into mitosis, which is cellular division. So we're trying to prepare for that. So the cell is going to prepare to enter mitosis um, and the spindle apparatus or the spindle fibers are going to begin to form in this stage. So what if the cell growth, G1, right? Like what if the growth and all of that becomes totally uncontrolled? What is that called? That's called cancer. When we have uncontrolled cellular growth and improper gene regulation, we can get tumor formation. So tumors are masses of cells that have been uncontrollably growing and dividing. Okay, so cancer is caused by mutations in our DNA that control the production of proteins that help us regulate the cell cycle. So that helps the timing of the cell cycle. Um, we also have things called carcinogens, which you may have heard of. They're substances that are known to cause cancer. We know that smoking, right, um, when you inhale the chemicals and cigarettes and things, they have carcinogenic materials in them that that can lead to cancer formation. So cancer comes when we have uncontrolled cell growth and improper gene regulation. We can get tumors that can cause cancer. Okay, so we have a normal cell that grows and divides. But then if a mutation occurs and that mutation doesn't help us regulate the cell cycle, it just is going through it repeatedly without any checks and balance system, then we're going to get these masses of tumors. And where this gets really dangerous is when some of the tumor buds off and, you know, breaks off and starts to land on other tissues in the body. And therefore it's going to start growing there as well because the cell cycle is still happening, right? So that's where cancer can get very dangerous when it breaks off and goes to other places in your body. And that's called metastasis or metastatic cancer. So interphase is where the cell's growing, where we're creating a second copy of DNA and where the cell is pre um, preparing to divide. M phase is where that division actually occurs. So the M phase is also called mitosis. And there are four main steps and I call them PMAT, P-M-A-T. So you have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. Telophase and cytokinesis are essentially happening together. Um, they kind of are in many books considered one step. Okay, so we call this PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. So here's a picture of what's going on. This is just mitosis. This is just cellular division. So in prophase, oops, in prophase, you can see that you have a tightly packed, the nucleus is starting to dissolve, but you have a tightly packed um, set of chromosomes here. In metaphase, the chromosomes that we're tracking are lined up in the center of the cell. And you can see these little spindle fibers are starting to connect to the um, to the chromosomes in the middle. In anaphase, the chromosomes are being pulled apart by our spindle fibers. Okay, then in telophase, we have the formation of two, that's really annoying, we have the formation of two um, nuclei here, and we're still in one cell. So this is one, our cell has two nuclei, which is kind of cool. And then in cytokinesis, the cytoplasm starts to pinch off in the center. It's called the cleavage furrow. Cytokinesis is when the cytoplasm pinches off, and that's going to separate those two cells to create two genetically identical daughter cells. So we started off with one cell here, okay? And we went through the different stages of mitosis to end up with two cells. Now remember, those two cells at the end of cytokinesis, it's a cycle. They're gonna go back and they're going to go into G1, which is the growth phase, when they're growing and doing their normal functions. That's part of interphase. So what actually happens in each phase? So prophase, the chromosomes are condensed very tightly. They're packed tightly together in the center. The nuclear envelope is starting to dissolve. In metaphase, the chromosomes are lining up in the center or the middle of the cell. I think metaphase middle. In anaphase, the chromosomes are being pulled apart and begin to travel to the opposite ends of the cell because it's about to become two cells. So we need each set of DNA on either end of the cell. So then when it splits in the middle with telophase and cytokinesis, when we have two nuclei that form around that DNA on either end of the cell, and then cytokinesis pinches off the cytoplasm, then we have our two complete cells. 
that's why it's so important that we have two sets of DNA because you start off with one cell and you end up with two cells and you need a complete set of DNA for each one of these. So you have one set of DNA at the beginning, S phase doubles it to two sets of DNA. And then when you split the cell at the end, each one gets its own fancy new set of DNA. So the cell cycle as a whole, we said PMAT was mitosis. It can be written as I PMAP. So interphase, where we have G1, S, G2, we have growth and normal functions, synthesis of a copy of DNA. And then we have a preparation step before we divide. And then it goes into prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis, where the cytoplasm pinches off to create two genetically identical daughter cells. So where does mitosis occur? We know that it's occurring in cells. We know that it is the last part of our cell cycle, and it's the quickest part of our cell cycle, roughly 10% of a cell's lifetime. But where is this actually occurring in the body? Well, it's happening in your body cells that are called somatic cells. Just like ninth grade and freshmen mean the same thing, body cells and somatic cells are the same thing. So these are cells that make up your body, okay? These are not cells that are going to make up someone else's body someday, potentially. This is not including sperm cells and egg cells. This is just all of the cells that make up your body, that repair your tissues and help grow yourself. Okay, so these are body cells and somatic cells. And in humans, we have 46 chromosomes in each one of our body cells. So cells containing 46 chromosomes are gonna go through the process of mitosis. Okay, so these cells are also called diploid cells. And they're called diploid cells because these, these cells have 46 chromosomes. And di means two, we know that. Like a disaccharide that we talked about means two. Okay, so you get one set of chromosomes from mom and one set of chromosomes from dad, which means that you have two sets of chromosomes that makes your cells diploid. Now, again, this is not referring to sperm cells and egg cells. Those go on to make other people. We're talking about what makes up your person. Okay, so we have body cells, somatic cells, and diploid cells. They all mean the same thing. And it means that they have 46 chromosomes if it's inside of a human body. So what would that look like here? Okay, in interphase, when a body cell or a somatic cell enters into the cell cycle, and we are in interphase, right? At the beginning, we're in G1, S, and G2, okay? So in G1, the first step, if it's a normal somatic cell, it's going to have 46 chromosomes, right? It's going to have 46 chromosomes. Now during the S phase, that doubles. So if we have 46 at the beginning of the cell cycle, and it doubles during the second step of interphase called S phase, we're going to end up with 92 chromosomes. 46 plus 46 is 92 chromosomes here. Okay, then we're going to go through G2 and then all of mitosis. And when we split with cytokinesis, when you split 92 in half, you end up with 46 and 46. That's why that step, that S phase is so important because S phase doubles that DNA. So when you split it, you end up with 46 and 46. These make genetically identical daughter cells and they have 46 chromosomes and 46 chromosomes, just like the original cell. And that's super important. That means that we did the process correctly. So remember, the cell cycle is that. It is a cell cycle. It's a process that happens over and over and over again. So when you go interphase, G1, S, G2, and then mitosis, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis, you created two cells. Those two cells, immediately, they go back into interphase. They start growing. They're going to do their normal functions. Then they're going to go through an S phase. They're going to double their DNA. Then they're going to go to G2 and they're going to prepare to divide. And then they're going to make more cells, right? And immediately it starts back over in G1 every single time. And again, we need our cell cycle to help replenish our cells over time to help us grow and to help us repair. Thanks, you guys. I'll see you in the next one.